Real quick, sorry about that. Donald Trump is heading to the uh, podium there in Jupiter, Florida. He's about to address the supporters. So let's listen in. This was an amazing evening, and I don't think I've ever had so many horrible, horrible things said about me in one week. $38 million worth of horrible lies, but that's okay. It shows you how brilliant the public is because they knew they were lies, and it, it was just uh, really amazing to watch. And to get these kind of numbers where they call them immediately is, uh, is just something very special. So I want to thank the public. I want to thank the people of Michigan. I want to thank the people of Mississippi. And it is such a great honor. And uh, it's also really wonderful to have you at Trump National Golf Club. Uh, Jack Nicholas did this. It's a, a Jack Nicholas signature course, and it's a great, great resort and place. And uh, we have a lot of our members here, I see. And uh, we love our members. And Jack, Jack, by the way, Jack Nicholas is a special man, and he did a special job, and we love Jack. And we have another special man, Paul O'Neill of the Yankees. Come, stand up, Paul. Paul. In fact, Paul, you come, you originally come from Ohio, right? Oh, wow. Paul O'Neill of the Yankees. Hey, Paul, you come from Ohio? Do you endorse me? I love you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Wow. That's a great endorsement from Ohio. Thank you. Uh, he's great. It looks like he could go out there right now. So. I just wanted to tell you that it was really an interesting week, an amazing week. I want to congratulate a lot of people, and including the candidates. I mean, this is not easy stuff. When you're, uh, when you're doing this, it is, uh, it's pretty wild. And I must tell you, it's very, very important as a Republican that our senators and that our congressmen get reelected, that we put a good group of people together that we keep the people that are there. We have some terrific people. Not all of them are on my side, but we have some terrific people. And it's very, very important. If we're going to be effective, it's very, very important. One of the things I'm most happy about is that the turnout has been just massive for every, every week, now, whether it's South Carolina or any place. I mean, it started pretty much with New Hampshire and uh, it, it really, Iowa, no matter where you go, it's, uh, it's records. I think it's actually, the single biggest story in politics today, it's what's happening at the booth. The tremendous number of people that are coming out to vote. Uh, some of the states are getting, in fact, one has a 102% increase over four years ago. It's uh, amazing, 102%. Um, on average, you're talking about probably more than 50. You're talking about millions and millions of people, whereas the Democrats are down 30, 35%. They're down from what they were. We're up by 50% and even more than that. You're talking about millions of people. So I actually think it's the biggest story in politics today. And I hope that the Republicans will embrace it. We have, don't forget, we have Democrats coming over, very importantly. We have independents coming over. And they haven't done that ever, probably ever. And with all of these people coming over, we're going to have something very, very special if I win and if I get to go against Hillary. Polls are showing that I beat her, and some of the polls have me beating her very easily because when you take advantage, we will take many, many people away from the Democrats and we'll take many, many people away that normally go Democrat as independents. And, that, and we're seeing that. We're seeing that. We had people come over here who have never voted Republican, who have never even thought about it, and they came and they voted Republican. And I'll tell you another group of people that I've seen, and I'll be signing autographs after a speech, and We'll be talking to people. And I've had many, many people say, and it was a beautiful thing to hear it. Mr. Trump, I'm 67 years old. Many people. I'm 67 years old. I've never, ever voted before. I've never come close to voting before. This is the first time I'll ever vote. And that's so amazing. It's so amazing. And they do it with such spirit. So it's, it's really great. Um, I want to thank the special interests and the lobbyists because they obviously did something to drive these numbers. I mean, we're close to 50 and 40. And no, I, no, but I want to congratulate them because to raise that much money that quickly is a pretty good feat, right? Do we agree? No, many of them are my friends, but they just have to gamble. You know, they have to do it. 
I want to thank uh, Paul Ryan. He called me a couple of days ago. He could not have been nicer. He was very encouraging, and uh, I have great respect for Paul Ryan. Great respect. Uh, Ted Cruz is interesting because he's always, I mean, he's always saying, I'm the only one that can beat Donald Trump. You have to vote for Donald Trump, and you're going to vote for Donald Trump, and you're going to be miserable. You have to vote for me. But he says he's the only one that can beat Donald Trump. And I've heard it so many times. And I said, but he never beats me. I mean, take a look. He never beats me. Meaning he rarely beats me. The fact is that we're going to do well. Ted is going to have a hard time. When he gets to certain states, he's going to have a hard time. One of the things we do is we get up to New York. I'm going to do great. We get to New Jersey. I'm going to do great. Chris Christie's here someplace. And the governor of New Jersey, great prosecutor. I watched what he did to Marco. Where's Chris? He's around here somewhere. And great prosecutor, and he's, uh, and, and really, when he came and called and he said, I've seen this, it's an amazing thing, it's a movement. Many people have called it a movement. I mean, four covers in the last three and a half months on Time Magazine. I mean, many people have called it a movement. And part of that movement's what I said before. I mean, it's the people want to be involved. So when Chris called, and when Sarah Palin called, and when Jerry Falwell Jr. called, and when uh, Joe Arpaio called, I mean, you know when Joe Arpaio of Arizona calls that Trump is tough on the border, okay? And I don't want to be tough. I want to be fair. But we're going to be, we're going to have borders again, folks. We're going to have borders. We're going to have the wall. We're going to have borders. And people are going to come to the country, and they're going to come into the country, and they're going to be very happy, but they're coming in legally. They have to come in legally. <laughs> Uh, Mitt Romney got up and made a speech uh, the other day. No, that's okay. Look. No, no, I understand. No, no. He's a very nice man. Um, but, you know, I understand. Look, it's hard. When you go through this and then you get to the, the final gate and you don't get over it, it's a hard thing. I mean, I, so I understand. But he did make some statements. And I brought some things up because he said, water company is gone. I said, it is? I didn't know that. I have very successful companies. Let me just explain. I'm going to do this in about two seconds. But I filed with the federal elections 100 pages, almost 100 pages, that many of the press have gone down and seen. And they were all very, very impressed. I built a great, great company. I have very low debt. I have assets like this. This is owned 100% by me with no debt. <laughs> You've seen Mar-a-Lago, you've seen, and that's a 100% by me with no debt. I have Trump International where you were last week, 100% by me and no debt. You look at Doral where we just had the major championship. I mean, I have a lot of things in Florida. Uh, partners with Related on numerous jobs on the beach, very successful. Partners with Gil and Michael Dezer on the beach, massive buildings. Nobody ever talks about this stuff. And, you know, many, many jobs in New York, including a city on the west side from 72nd to 59th Street on the Hudson River. One of the most successful projects ever built in real estate. Uh, the Bank of America building a big chunk of it in San Francisco. 1290 Avenue there. There's many, many things. And, and Mitt got up, and he really shouldn't have done it. It wasn't, it wasn't becoming, honestly. And he talked about the water company. Well, there's the water company. I mean, we sell water, and we have water. And it's a very successful, you know, it's a private little water company, and I supply the water for all my places, and it's good, but it's very good. Trump steaks. Where are the steaks? Do we have steaks? We have Trump steaks. He said, the steak company, and we have Trump steaks. And by the way, if you want to take one, we'll charge you about, what, 50 bucks a steak? No, I'm <laughs> We have Trump magazine. Let me see the magazine. He said, Trump Magazine is out. I said, it is? I thought I read one two days ago. This comes out, and it's called The Jewel of Palm Beach, and we, it's all, it goes to all of my clubs. I've had it for many years, and it's the magazine. It's great. Anybody want to run here? Take one. Club. My club champion. So, and the airline, by the way, I sold the airline. You know, he said, Trump Airline. Well, I sold the airline, and I actually made a great deal. Complicated. And in really terrible times, the economy was horrible, and I made a phenomenal deal. I had the shuttle, and I sold it. I made, you know, so I'm hearing about all of these things. And by the way, Trump University, it's, we're holding it. When I win the lawsuit, which I'll win, 
Uh, they did an ad, Rubio did an ad the other day. He had two or three people. And the three people were saying, uh, all, oh, it was so terrible. It was, the reason I didn't settle, every one of these people, in fact, we sent them out, and the reporters don't like to report it, but we sent their letters out, their report cards. Their report cards were all excellent. Beautiful statements. We love it. You can't settle cases when the person suing you has given you letters and in some cases tapes saying how great it is. It was a very nice thing. So we're putting it on hold. If I become president, that means Ivanka, Don, Eric, and my family will start it up. But we have a lot of great people who want to get back into Trump University. It's going to do very well, and it will continue to do very well. But we have a, a lawsuit where they're trying to get, you know, we have one of these class action lawyers guys, and, and it's ridiculous. But we'll win that lawsuit. And I'm, I'm some, I just want to explain. I and the United States should be this. I don't settle lawsuits, very rare. Because once you settle lawsuits, everybody sues you. Very simple. It's like business. I teach it. When you settle lawsuits, it's easier to settle. Sometimes it's cheaper to settle. But once you settle, I had a friend taught me a long time ago. He was sued very rarely. And everybody else in the same business was sued all the time. He said, Donald, I never settle. The lawyers learn you don't settle, they don't sue. So I don't settle lawsuits. When I watch these banks, they're settling lawsuits all the time. They get paid $40 million a year, a banker. And then he say, settles lawsuits with governments and other people giving billions and billions of dollars. I don't do it. So when I, when I saw the different things, uh, and by the way, the winery, you see the wine, because he mentioned Trump Vodka. It's the largest winery on the East Coast. I own it 100%, no mortgage, no debt. You can all check, you have to go check the records, folks. In fact, the press, I'm asking you, please check, because you can see if there's any debt. It was the Kluge estate, John Kluge. He was the richest man in the United States. He died. And he built one of the great vineyards of all time. I mean, there is nothing like it. Close to 2,000 acres. It's in Charlottesville, Virginia, right next to the Thomas Jefferson Memorial. And we're very proud of it. We make the finest wine, as good a wine as you can get anywhere in the world. And I know the press is extremely honest, so I won't offer them any. But if they want, they can take a bottle of wine home. The members... The members have plenty, right? The members have plenty. But we have one of the greatest. Actually, I believe it's the largest vineyard and the largest winery on the East Coast. And so I just wanted, so I wanted to put that to rest. So you have the water, you have the steaks, you have the airline that I sold. I mean, what's wrong with selling? Every once in a while you can sell something. You have the wines and all of that. And Trump University, we're gonna start it up as soon as I win the lawsuit. Does that make sense? I mean, that's it. Okay. The, uh, and I want to thank my friend Paul O'Neill, because that to me is a big deal. I, I, I had such respect when Paul was a Yankee. He just didn't make mistakes. Tough, smart, we could use him right now. And he just didn't make mistakes. I love that kind of a guy. I think what this shows, really more than anything else, is that advertising is not as important. It really isn't as important as competence because there has never been more money spent on hitting somebody than was spent on me. And between that and people saying things, and you know, Lindsey Graham goes, and he's a nasty person. First of all, he's wrong on the military. He truly, this is why he's, so I've been doing this for 15 years. That's right, we've been fighting a war for 15 years with this kind of thinking. I mean, if you're gonna fight a war, win the war, and let's get back to rebuilding our country, okay? But Lindsey Graham, I mean, he's been so nasty. I think he's probably a nice guy, but he's been so nasty. I watch him, I say, man, does he hate Donald Trump? And I watch him, and, and you know, if you think about it, every single person that's attacked me has gone down, okay? I don't want to mention names. Let's not mention names, okay? They, they're out. They're gone. But you can take a look at virtually every single person. We started off with 17. We're down to four. Of the four, they're pretty much all gone. Okay, pretty much. They didn't do so well tonight, folks. Okay, I'm not going to say anybody didn't do well. They didn't do well. There's only one person did well tonight, Donald Trump, I will tell you. It's true. I mean, it, it was actually amazing. I was impressed. And even Megyn Kelly said, boy, Donald Trump really did well tonight. Thank you, Megyn. Thank you. That was a very unusual. I was shocked, actually, to hear that. But that was very nice. And Charles Krauthammer said that. He was very, very nice. Thank you, Charles. It's about time. I've been waiting like five years, Charles. Um, 
But but it is true. I mean, every single we I have had such hostility. Like with Lindsay, he was at seven. He attacked me, and we took him down to zero. He leaves in disgrace. He then goes to his own state. And they do a poll in South Carolina. He endorses somebody else. And the poll in South Carolina has me at 47, him at two. And he's a sitting senator. And then he went down from there. And, and you know what? I don't like to bring it up, but I tell you, it's enough, Lindsay. You just relax. Go home. Relax for a little while. Everyone knows. You take this big defeat. And the problem is the press never calls them out. They go to this horrible defeat. And then they go and they start immediately on the attack. And it's like he never ran and made a fool out of himself. You know, at what point do you call people out? So I call people out. But it is true. Uh, they've attacked me viciously. And every single one who's attacked me is gone. And I'm very proud of that. Because, because that's what we should have for our country. That's what we should have. ISIS should not be beating us. We don't win anymore. We don't win with our military. We don't win with health care. We don't win with anything. And we should be in a position where ISIS is dictating terms. And, you know, the other day at one of the debates, the one before last, they asked Ted uh, Lion Ted. I call him Lion Ted. He holds the Bible high, and then he goes down, he puts the Bible down, and then he lies. <laughs> Lion Ted. You know, he, he'll say, I'm the only one that beat Donald Trump. I said it before. I beat him. I beat him. But he doesn't say, yeah, he won like four, and I won like 12 or 13, right? He forgets the other part. But lie in Ted. And you know, when they say the evangelists, because in watching, in fact, I was watching Carl, and he said how great I did with the evangelicals. And everyone was a little surprised. I'm a very good Christian. And, you know, they're chipping away at Christianity. And we're not going to let that happen anymore, folks. I'll tell you. And a lot of times I'll say at the rallies around Christmas time, we're going to start saying Merry Christmas again. You know, they don't say it anymore. The department stores don't put it up. We're going to start saying it again. But they're chipping away at Christianity, and we just can't do it. And I'll tell you, with the evangelicals, they get it. They get it. They get me. They understand me. I'll be the best thing that ever happened to them. I mean that, 100%. And they don't like the way Ted talks, and they don't like the fact that he truly does lie. And I actually was, I mean, lies badly. And I was actually, interestingly, little Marco helped me a lot. Because Marco, what Marco did is in one of the debates, he screamed across me. I was, I've been in the center from the beginning, right? Never out of center. In fact, I always like an odd number because with the odd number, I'm in the center. With an even number, like last week, I hated it because we had four people, so I'm not in the center. So we should always keep it odd numbers, right? So we're right in the center. But I've been in the center for every single debate. But Marco helped me a lot because he called Ted a liar. He said, you're a liar. That's the first time. Look, I know politicians better than anybody. They're liars, okay? They're serious liars. More importantly, they'll never get you to the promised land, ever. They'll never get you to the promised land. They won't do it because they're controlled by the special interests. They're controlled by the people that put up all this money for them to run. They're controlled. You know how much money was spent in the last week on me? And do you know how many times they were asking, despite the fact that they're not supposed to be talking to their super PAC? Carl, fellas, let me ask you a question. How many times do you think Marco and Ted and all of them were calling their super PAC? Is that right? It's called life. That's the way life works. They talk to their super PAC. They're not supposed to, but that's the way life works. So... We are going to do something. I think we're going to clean the slate. I think we're going to do really well in Florida. It's my second home. I love Florida. I love Florida. I love Florida. Special place. And I think we're going to do really well. I think we're going to do really well in Ohio. Now that I have Paul O'Neill's endorsement, I know I'm going to win Ohio. But I love Ohio. I have so many friends in Ohio. It's an amazing place. And uh, we're going to go have a lot of fun. And then what we're going to do is we're going to beat Hillary Clinton. And we're going to beat her badly. We're going to beat her badly. And I think one of the things, and then we'll take some questions, but one of the things that really I add that's very different. You know, we always talk about the five and sometimes six, but the five states that you have to get, whether it's Ohio or Pennsylvania or Florida, you know, if you don't get one, because the Republicans, structurally, it's much tougher. It's much tougher for a Republican to win the presidency, like by a factor of five. 
But I add things that nobody else can do. I have a chance of New York. Now, can you imagine if you want to size, as big as New York, all of those delegates? Upstate New York, I poll higher than anybody ever. Because they are really in trouble up there. And they know that I would have done things, they wouldn't be in trouble right now if they would have taken my advice. But they're really in trouble. But I'll get, I'll get Michigan. I mean, I'm going to get Michigan. Because we're going to bring the car industry back. We're going to take it back. We're going to bring the car industry back into Michigan. I'm going to win Michigan. It's never even a question. When these candidates are talking about running, it's never even a question. Michigan's not something they even talk about. I'll win New Jersey. I'll win Ohio. I'll win Florida. I'll win Virginia. I have great properties in Virginia. Charlottesville, we just talked. Winery. Uh, on the Potomac River, we have one of the great places in the world. I have 600 acres on the Potomac River, one of the great pieces of property in the world. Very, very successful place. Um, you know, I have a lot of employees in Virginia. And it seems that when I have something in a location, like when I'm in Virginia and I have a lot of employees, I have great places, uh, Florida where I have Doral. Doral was great last week with uh, Adam Scott. I mean, two days ago, Adam Scott, how good was that? Who's a great young man and the way he won the, uh, the tournament, the Cadillac World Championship. But when you have property in a state, it means you love the state. It means you have a lot of employees. You pay these employees. You take care of their, their health care. You take care of their education for their families. You take care of so many things. And you just do well. So I think I'm going to do great there, and I think I'm going to do great in Ohio. And I really look forward to it. I'm going to be working very hard between the two and Illinois. I mean, I have one of the greatest buildings in the world. I mean, in Chicago, I have one of the greatest buildings, rated the number one hotel in North America. And I'm very proud of it. It's a great, great, right on the river. And it's a great, great building. And maybe that's where we have our next news conference. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll do it right in Chicago. So let's, uh, let's see what the press has to ask. And we'll then go home and we'll go celebrate a lot of victories. Yes, go ahead. CBS. Not Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, or John Casey. No, I don't really, because you have to win. I, I know how to win. I've won. These people will tell you, have I won many club championships? Stand up. Stand up. Uh, stand up. Have I won many club championships? Does Trump know how to close? You know, believe it or not, it's not so different. Winning is winning. You've got to be not easy to win club championships, believe me. And I'm not talking about with strokes. I'm talking with no strokes. But the fact is that I like to close, I like to close things out. So until the last person is gone, you know, again, we started with a field of 17 and now we're down to four and I really want to close things out. I don't want to start thinking in terms. I have not even focused on Hillary yet. I'm doing well. Numerous polls have me winning, but I haven't even started with her other than four weeks ago when I actually hit her very hard because what she said was wrong. Oh, there are many cases. I mean, many cases. The case I, I have all night. OK, I mean. You'd have, to, you'd have to go on for hours. Hillary is going to be very easy to beat. She's a very flawed candidate. Very, very flawed candidate. And it's going to be, I believe, it's going to be a very, very easy uh, target. If she's allowed to run. Because there's a real question as to whether or not she's even going to be allowed to run. And if the government is going to do its job properly, she will not be allowed to run. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Tom. Well, I have no message to Marco. I think that, uh, you know, he has to make his own. It's, you know, it's been a tough night for him, but uh, he's going to make his own decision. Uh, I've actually had a good relationship with Marco, believe it or not. He became hostile about two weeks ago, and it didn't work. See, hostility works for some people. It doesn't work for everybody. Okay? No, but he became very hostile. And uh, you know what? It doesn't work for him. He was better. He would have been better off had he kept the original pitter-patter going. But this didn't work. <laughs> Say it, Tom, a little louder. Right now, you're being outspent one more Well, I've been outspent by everybody. I mean, part of the beauty, look, I have much more money than all of them put together times 20, okay? But I'm a businessman. I don't have to spend. Why should I spend the money? I've spent probably 25 or 30 million dollars. Other people have spent 160 million dollars. You know, you have the numbers. In New Hampshire, as an example, I spent a million and a half dollars, and somebody else spent 48 million dollars. I was one. The other person was number five. 
Wouldn't it be nice if we had a country that worked that way? Right? Right? So, so the CNN poll uh, came out and I was 41. In fact, I was 49. And second is 15, 15 and 15. And, uh, you know, and I've spent less money than anybody else. Now, the phony Wall Street Journal poll just came out, where I'm still number one, but that poll, if you remember the poll from South Carolina, the Wall Street Journal NBC poll was the phoniest, most disgusting poll I've ever seen, okay? I don't believe that poll, and I don't know who's making up that poll, but they should not pay their bill. You know, I don't do that. People say, oh, Donald Trump doesn't pay the bill. That's true. I never pay bills when somebody does a bad job. They did such a bad job during the South Carolina run they had me practically dying in South Carolina the day before. I mean, they did that with viciousness and vindictiveness. And it looked like I was really in trouble. And then I won in a landslide. The poll was wrong. And then the following day, they came out with a national poll that was ridiculous, too. So they came out with another one. NBC, Chuck Todd, NBC, Wall Street Journal. I'm saying, what's wrong with them? It's not right. Now, CNN came out with a poll 49 a couple of days ago. They came out with a poll 30. Again, I'm still in first place, but I really believe their poll is wrong. And boy, did they turn out to be wrong in South Carolina, okay? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'll be honest with you. I saw it. I, I was a little concerned with that ad until I saw it. I think it's better than any ad I've ever taken for myself. I do. You know why? Let me just tell you why. No, I really mean it. I really mean it. I, I heard about the ad and I said, oh, I'm not going to like this. But when I looked at it, and I can be, by the way, I can be more presidential than anybody. I can be more presidential if I want to be. I can be more presidential than anybody. You know, when I have 16 people coming at me from 16 different angles, uh, you don't want to be so presidential. You have to win. You have to beat them back, right? And, but I would say more presidential, and I've said this a couple of times, more presidential than anybody other than the great Abe Lincoln. He was very presidential, right? But the truth is that uh, I saw that ad. And people are sick and tired of being politically correct. And I actually think that ad is good for me. Because in some cases, as you know, I was kidding and I was joking. I have a big audience and I was joking with words not so bad, by the way. But I was joking. In other cases, I was showing anger and showing a certain toughness that we need in our country. But I watched that ad and I said, you know, that ad shows a certain degree of anger. And it shows a certain degree like we're not going to take it anymore from all of these countries that have been ripping us off and taking our jobs and taking our money like we're a bunch of babies. Very, very stupid babies. So I watched that ad and I don't think it's a bad ad for me. I actually think if I had my choice of saying I could have it down or let it run, let it run. Yeah. Say it again. Oh, you're so politically correct. You're so beautiful. Oh, look at you. Oh, oh, he's so... Oh, I know. You've never heard a little bad, a little off language. I know you're so perfect. Aren't you perfect? Aren't you just a perfect young man? Give me... Hey, give me a break. You know what? It's stuff like that that people in this country are tired of, okay? It's, it's stuff like that. Sarah... Say it again, sir, a little louder. Well, maybe at some point they will, but look, I hear 39 million has been spent. I'll be honest with you, I'm very surprised. I looked at the numbers in Mississippi, I'm close to 50%. That's not 50% with two people, that's 50% with four people. That's a lot. That's shocking. That's like record setting. Big difference, you know, if you're running like you're Hillary and you're running against one guy, I mean, you're running against Bernie, okay? And you get a 50 or a 52 or a 56. That's a, I'm running against three very competent people, and I'm getting 50%, and in Michigan, I'm close to 40% against a big group of people. Uh, I think that, I, I will say this, I am a little bit surprised that I was at Durrell, and I was watching, and I was watching Adam Scott hit that last great shot, and I went back and I was watching the news and 
one of the rooms, and every single advertisement was about me. And it was during my tournament. I'm turning my tournament. I go from tournament to horrible ad. Every, the, mo the most vicious ads. I mean, one of the reasons I brought the wine out and the water out and the steak out and more wine and more water. And I told you about Trump University. Well, we'll win that case. That's going to be an easy case to win. Everybody signed a document. One of the reasons is just because of that. They hit me with this Trump University. It's not even a big case. It's, we're going to win the case. I could settle that case so easily. I don't want to settle it. Be easier for me to settle it. I wouldn't have all you people writing about it, but I don't want to settle it. I could settle it so easy. The fact is that, look, you have to do in life, Sarah, you have to do what's right. And if you live by principle, and believe it or not, I'm a very highly principled person. If you live by principle, you're going to do very well. So, but I, I just to finish, I, I must tell you, I was a little surprised when I saw the viciousness of the ads and the viciousness of, of really uh, Mitt was very vicious. I mean, he gets up and he just, I, I, I wish he used that same energy against Obama. I think he would have won. No, no. If he used the same energy against Obama, he would have won. Carl? Yeah, I say let's come together, folks. We're going to win. I say let's come together. Carl, the answer is not 100%, but largely I would say yes. You know, I, some people you're just not going to get along with it. It's okay. But largely I would like to do that. And believe it or not, I am a unifier. I unify. I mean, you look at all of the things I built all over the world. I'm a unifier. I get along with people. I have great relations. I even start getting along with, cam with you, right? Huh? <laughs> Campaign Carl. But no, I get along with people. And... I really say this, Carl, I think it's time to unify. We have something special going in the Republican Party, and unfortunately, the people in the party, they call them the elites, or they call them whatever they call them, but those are the people that don't respect it yet. We have millions and millions of people, I discussed it before, we have millions and millions of people coming up and voting, largely for me, in all fairness, but for other people also. And, and Carl, you know this because I've seen you report on it. It's a record. It's a record. It's never happened before. In a hundred years, what's happening now to the Republican Party has never happened before. And the people in the party, whether you call them establishment or not, you can call them anything. I don't know if there is such a thing as the establishment, frankly. But whether you call them the establishment or not, they should embrace it. They should you know, the Democrats would love to have what's happening. I have friends on the other side. They say, boy, would we like that to happen. You know, Carl, they're down 35%. There's no spirit there. Whereas we're way up with millions of people. So what I say to the Republicans is embrace it. We will win the election easily. Yeah. Well, I don't know that you have to win everybody, Carl. Right, right. Okay, let's talk about that because it's so interesting. I'm not really changing the Republican Party because I'm actually a conservative, but I'm a common sense conservative. Look, nobody's more conservative than me on energy independence. Okay, I've been talking about it for years. Nobody. Nobody's more conservative than me on the military. Nobody's more conservative than me on taking care of our great veterans who are being absolutely maligned. Nobody's more conservative than me on health care where we're going to repeal and replace Obamacare and on Common Core where we're getting rid of it. And on budgets where, whether it's the penny deal, there are so many different things, but we'll straighten out our budgets. Carl, we owe $19 trillion. We're going to start paying off debt. And we're not going to pay it all off that quickly, and nor do we have to. But we have to start bringing it down to a level that's sustainable because we're going in the wrong direction. So, and certainly nobody is more, more conservative than me on the border. The one thing I guess people could say is that on trade, I am a free trader, believe it or not, but I'm also a smart trader. We cannot let China, and I like China, they're wonderful, but their leaders are too smart for our leaders. 
I like China. I do great with China. The Bank of America building, other buildings, I have because of China. In a war, we fought. But I will tell you, nobody, nobody is more conservative actually on trade. The problem I have is you have people that are in National Review and they're eggheads. They're just eggheads. They have no common sense whatsoever. No common sense whatsoever. It's not free trade when China charges tax to get our product in and they don't let our product in anyway. And yet they take their product and they just send it to us like nothing. We have a trade deficit with China of $500 billion a year. We have a trade deficit with Japan of over $100 billion a year. We have a trade deficit with Mexico. That's why Mexico is going to pay for the wall. $58 billion a year, 100%. It's 100%. You know, these guys come up that I'm against. And they say, you're not going to get Mexico to pay for the wall. I said, of course I am. We have a trade deficit with Mexico of $58 billion a year. The wall's going to cost $10 billion. You tell me I can't make that deal? That's an easy deal. So, so the only thing, Carl, because I love the question, but the only thing I can say that some people would say I'm not conservative is trade, but that's because I want fair trade. Okay? I want free trade. But free trade, you have to have smart people on both sides. And we don't have smart people on our side. So I want fair trade. It's got to be fair trade. Or as you would say, fair and balanced trade, okay? As they would say at Fox. Okay. Uh, Jeremy, go ahead. Very important. Destroyed, destroyed. Yeah. You know what? Okay, I, I know what you're going to say, Jeremy. Let, let me just, I, I, I can't because nobody's listening to you, Jeremy, okay? Nobody ever listens to you. Let, let me just explain. The problem that we have with trade, Jeremy, Jeremy, let me just tell you, is we have people and the other side that are grandmasters at monetary manipulation, at currency manipulation. They're manipulating their currency to such an extent that our companies cannot compete with other companies in other nations. They just can't compete. And because of that, we're losing our jobs. If you take a look at how many jobs China, as an example, has taken from us, but it's not just China, it's everybody. China's the big abuser because it's the biggest. China has taken millions of jobs, thousands of factories, what they've done to us. It's actually, I thought about it the other day, it's the greatest theft in the history of the world. They've taken out so much money. And again, I love China, it's great. And I don't hold anything against their leaders. I wish our leaders would do the same thing in reverse, but they don't. And we cannot continue, hey look, I won Michigan, and I went up there, and these people are incredible people. You take a look at some of the, some of the factories that have been abandoned there, where they moved into Mexico. You take a look at, as an example, in Chicago, where you have a Nabisco moves its big plant. They, they're closing their plant, they're moving to Mexico. Ford building a two and a half billion dollar factory, cars, in Mexico. I mean, we can't continue to do it. Carrier, two weeks ago, Carrier announced they're gonna close. 1,400 people laid off, they're gonna build air conditioners. They're gonna put their air conditioners in Mexico. They're gonna build them in Mexico. How does that help us? Yeah, sure. Okay, no, no, you know what's gonna happen, Jeremy? Let me tell you what's gonna happen, okay? Can I tell you what's gonna happen? When China thinks you mean it, when they think you mean it, they're going to stop manipulating their currency. And you won't even have to do anything. And you might even have free trade, okay? You didn't hear me. When China thinks you mean it, when Japan thinks you mean it, that we're not going to let them sell the cars like that because they're killing us. You know what we sell to Japan? Practically nothing. They have cars coming in by the millions, and we sell practically nothing. When Japan thinks we mean it, and they'll stop playing around with the yen, they're almost as good as China. You look at what's happening with Komatsu Tractor, and you look at what's happening with Caterpillar, and Caterpillar is being hurt very badly by Komatsu, not because their machines aren't, but Caterpillar makes a better machine, but because of the fact that they currency manipulate. And we can't have that. And they're not supposed to do it, but they have no fear of our government. 
They're dealing with babies. We're dealing with babies, okay? They are grandmaster players, and we have people that shouldn't be negotiating for us, all right? We shouldn't. All right, one more question. Uh, go ahead. You know, I'll, let's see if she'll finally give me a decent after 12 years. I, I'm not going to finish with her because she never asks a decent question. Okay, go ahead. I'm only kidding. Go ahead. That's right. Well, I don't know. I, I'm going to say, you know what? I think Lindsey Graham's probably a nice guy. And I was very tough on him because he was tough on me. But I think he's probably a nice guy. I think I could probably get along with Lindsey Graham. I could probably get along with Mitt Romney. I mean, I have nothing against Mitt Romney. And I understand how he feels. I mean, he worked really hard. Should have worked a little harder. But he worked really hard. And he didn't get there. I mean, I understand it. I could probably get along with, with Mitt Romney. I could prob I don't know Mitt Romney very well. I endorsed him. I, I backed him. I helped him. But I don't really know Mitt Romney. Um, I could probably get along very well with uh, Lindsey Graham. But he goes on television. He's very nasty. And when they're nasty, you have to be nasty back. I, I can get along with people. Look, the bottom line is we have something going that's so good. We should grab each other and we should unify the party. And nobody's going to beat us, okay? Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.